my wish what is your wish okay i will read my wish the lover has to keep the wish of the beloved my wish for my lovers is as follows do not shirk your responsibilities attend carefully to your worldly duties but keep always at the back of your mind that all this is babas when you feel happy sorry sorry i can't see anything when you feel happy think baba wants me to be happy when you suffer think baba wants me to suffer be resigned to every situation and think honestly and sincerely baba has placed me in this situation with understanding that baba is in everyone try to help and serve others i say with my divine authority to each and all that who so ever takes my name at the time of breathing his last comes to me so do not forget to remember in your last moments unless you start remembering me from now on it will be difficult to remember me when your end approaches you should start practicing from now on even if you take my name one only once every day you will not forget to remember me in your dying moments jai baba i just wanted to share something sure so last last week was uh, very challenging uh for for me we we had some um uh, unexpected demises in the family and oh i'm uh, sorry thank you so it was very very difficult to deal with it you know none of them stay in singapore but uh, they were close people and young they left uh, you know unexpectedly and then i have a difficult project which i am dealing with which was also getting very very complicated there were so many things happening in my heart you know i i just couldn't steer the ship and then i didn't know what to do and i i went as usual i i you know i dressed baba up and i said baba today you do uh, i follow and for the couple of days one he gave me enough healing strength to <coughs> overcome my grief and then he solved my um, office issues and i said i am not in the driver seat baba you lead me and that this week i was able to cope up with uh, emotional stress and was also able to get uh, break through in the work i have been doing for last 6 months so you know what i want to convey is our baba is not somewhere out there somewhere far he is here with us at every moment please don't cry namita please don't cry can i say something uh, here namita please yeah. please 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 okay. all right so before you became a baba the life is one thing okay yeah now that you have a become baba lover you love baba the whole paradigm of your life changed and uh, the spiritual life you are walking in the spiritual life the walking in the spiritual life it's not easy if you think it is easy it is easy it's not easy with uh, what i mean by is not easy means if you don't put all the ducks in a row then it becomes very difficult but you if you have right understanding then you will be fine everything is fine and dandy i'll tell you how suffering and happiness comes to us and we don't complain about happiness if you are have had a party did you come here ever and said oh kartik i had a party did you ever cry <laughs> or did i ever cry i had too much to drink you know we don't 
we think it is our right to enjoy but we only take negative things not so great things that happens to our mind that we take it as a challenge okay let's put one thing at a time one perspective okay so many things happen to you at the same time and you are overwhelmed but you are still standing you are still facing okay and uh, what i'm trying to help you is to come to the right understanding okay young people dying it happens why do we suffer when the people die because we are attached to our family members that's why when our family members die we suffer if somebody is dying in ukraine or uh, gaza strip or somewhere in uh, india us uh, that we don't know doesn't matter to us then why do we suffer when our people die it's only because the quality we have in our mind that is the attachment you have for these people that makes you suffer that's that's the simple cause as simple as that this is all what baba said i'm telling in my own uh, language that's all there is to it it is our suffering it is our attachment that causes us to lament for the death of a fa in the family member okay that's one thing and nothing wrong in crying for the people who die we suffer but with the right understanding you can get over it very soon okay that's one thing second thing we all have everybody has uh, challenges in work or we all probably one time or other may not be now but one time or other so many things and false not so great things at the same time okay but how we take them with what attitude we take these challenges that makes a big change okay all right baba never promised you i'll make your life very smooth and uh, you will get god realization once you became a baba lover i don't know whether you know it or not you already surrendered surrendered means baba already paved the way for your speedy travel the speedy travel is not easy but if you are ready you can face it okay and baba gives all of us all of us kartik uh, ashok me sanjay everybody he gives challenges like this i don't know whether you take it as a challenges or whether you take it as a sufferings or whether you take it uh, unfortunate things falling on me it's all your your uh, way of taking it but baba gives you so much of suffering for you it's all in control process he gives you so much of suffering so that you are drowned only up to the nose not about he is already saving you you know there is a two you know you know the story there are four steps going you and the god you, your steps and god's god steps and when you are facing some trouble you see only two steps oh then you think oh god left me oh those are my steps i'm suffering no 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 those are god steps he's carrying you is always with you okay so long as i consciousness is there you will continue to suffer okay any once you become a baba lover once you surrender to baba whatever the challenge you have you just do it not for your sake for baba's sake is baba's task you do as a baba's task and you don't expect the result your job is do your best and then leave the rest to me okay so there's no point in being emotional baba knows this baba is with you and baba knows exactly what you're going through 
you don't need to cry, you don't need to suffer, you need to get used to these challenges. That's all there is to it. Jai Baba. Thank you. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. All that is all that is nice to hear. Hello, Jai Baba. Can you hear me? Okay, I think it's all great. Like if you, we can't say this to the people in Palestine or Israel, but uh, based on the situation we are in, even this word called suffering is only happening during the waking state. Namita ji, you just read my wish. And it's been written somewhere that if, if you suffer, think that Baba wants you to suffer. So happiness and suffering are two sides of the same coin. Anyway, we wish you strength and we wish you this helps you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ravi ji. Thank you. I think I had, I had no idea why I picked you, Nomita. It, it's it, it, uh, Ashok already staked his claim by saying I, I was late yesterday and he was eager to uh, read the message. I know he likes to read the message every morning, okay, okay. but something think... told me, something told me that I should just tell you to do it. It's uh, it's uh, Baba. That that's that's one little uh, thing that I wanted to add in the mix. But the bigger thing that you've already put in practice is the is bringing Baba into our lives all the time, all the time, right? So it's uh, it's a live working example that you recounted. It's not easy to share what you just just shared. Um, on the call like this. I appreciate that because such sharing is what we need, what uh, motivates and also improves our behavior and inspires others to behave like this, which is drive. I mean, to use your analogy, Baba is driving the car. We think we are driving the car. We are just passengers, right? And he gives enough indications over and over again that it's him and he will give how much we need and how much we can handle, right? And of course, uh, all the stuff uh, Ravi said is uh, academically perfect and uh, logically correct. Yes, I think the karma was coming in to say it's not easy to put that in practice, but he had other kinds of audio issue, not hardware issues today. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry, I'm back. I'm sorry, I'm back. You know, I was yeah, uh, taking okay. a walk. I'm in Kumbakonam in my native place, and I had to attend a function, and I was taking a walk in the ground. So, somebody came to meet me, but sorry about that. No, what I wanted to no say problem. was very simple. Based on my own personal experience, we know that acronym loss, love, obedience, surrender, sacrifice which uh, relates to the last chapter in discourses, God has infinite love, you know, the gross sphere, the subtle sphere, and the mental sphere, that as uh, Ravi rightly said it, see, the, uh, the thing that I've learned is, however much we even strive to obey, love, Baba, again, it's His grace that is important to be able to implement it the way that He wants us yes. to do it. So the interesting thing is, as long as we keep striving and we keep working at it, whether we have the grace or not, in terms of love, obedience, surrender, that's what matters. So yes, uh, being aware of Baba, the self-awareness, and uh, following his messages as much as possible is a challenge you know, on a daily basis. And that's also only in the 12 to 16 hours of our waking state. So in the big picture, technically, we are not suffering all the time. And suffering, we also know, is based on attachment to our body, whether it's gross, subtle, or mental, or is it about our relationship with people, our siblings, our relatives, and so on, or it's with our own self. Even this desire for self-realization is an oxymoron. The desire for getting rid of the ego is quite right, because that is what this whole business of who am I is, is to get rid of this ego, which we call as Manonash, and there you are. Jai hey, Baba. I dare say, Kama, that yours is also pretty uh, academic. and But you yourself admitted it's easier said than done. But uh, the big picture goals is what we need to keep in mind and resign to the will of Baba. 
and yeah. you are a shining example of that uh namita be proud of that you have, yeah. you have said it and put that in practice as often so i i say that with the knowledge that i know because you shared so much uh, earlier and of course this morning so uh, condolences to you and uh, may you get the strength that to bounce back like you already have done and thanks for the bravery shown in sharing thank you so much thank you so much thanks for listening jai yeah, baba yeah okay so let's um, continue on the theme of reincarnation and karma we did uh, part 4 we completed part 4 after part 4 we take up the two two chapters of the problem of sex the sanctification of married lives uh, ma- 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 married life the idea is to see uh, how uh, baba says in in reincarnation and karma the 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 body or alt- uh, rather the soul alternates between a male and a female form and after we learned about that we take we take up these two uh, discourses and then go back to part 5 and part 6 so with that let's start here any questions or uh, any thoughts before we start okay now so let's uh, get started ashok ji you want to start reading okay yeah so here you go ओके Okay, please, uh, Ashok. Start. I, I just uh, wanted to say, I you know, I just wanted to clarify. I have, I want to be on time on the for the meeting because Baba has you know um, uh, expressed that punctuality should be there. But uh, you are the else? most punctual. You are the most hey, punctual, Ashok. Thank hey, you so much. Hey, that's Baba gives me that energy and. Uh, Uh, as regards reading any uh, of course i am starting but anybody else can also read the messages and the book and so it's uh, it's just that it gives me pleasure to be a part of this group jay yeah. baba one thing i want to say ashok ji baba mentioned to one of the mandali i don't know who it was but whenever two people meet and uh, try to have a discussion about meher baba he said he will be present 5 minutes before the scheduled time wow so baba is present with us absolutely and we are seven of us six uh, in Plus one form. baba is always there no, remember six, kartik six. you were saying uh, that you know why i made uh, kart uh, namita to read that i think baba's direction absolutely that's yeah. what i'm saying i i'm so yeah. shocked that i did that usually yeah. by default ashok because he loves it and he is the one that's most punctual and today yeah. just i pick namita anyway jai baba and we thank are thank you seven. so much baba and kartik we are seven six of us and seventh baba indi yeah. jai baba thank you baba the, uh, the problem of sex sex is decidedly one of the most important problems with which the human mind is confronted in the domain of duality it is the one of the givens in the makeup of human nature that one has to deal with the sub topic is element of sex like everything else in human life sex comes to be judged through the opposites which are the necessary creations of the limited mind just as the mind tries to fit life into a scheme of alternatives such as joy or pain good or bad solitude or company attraction or repulsion in relation to sex it tends to think of indulgences and repression as alternatives from which there is no escape it seems as if the mind must accept the one alternative or the other 
yet it cannot wholeheartedly accept either. When it tries repression, it is dissatisfied with its lot and longingly thinks of indulgence. When it tries indulgence, it becomes conscious of its bondage to the senses and seeks freedom by going back to mechanical repression. The mind remains dissatisfied with both alternatives. And there thus arises one of the most vital and complicated problems of human life. In order to solve the problem of sex, the mind must first understand that both alternatives are equally the creation of imagination working under the deluding influence of craving. The subtopic is opposites of intelligence and repression. Indulgence. Craving, indulgence and repression. Oh, sorry. Yeah, opposites of indulgence and repression. Yeah, sorry. Uh, craving is implicitly present in the repression of sex as well as in its gratification. Both results in the vitiation of consciousness through lust or the desire for sensations. Mind is therefore inevitably restless in either alternatives. Alternative. Just as when there are clouds in the sky, there is gloom and lack of sunshine whether it rains or not. So when the human mind is shouted by craving, there is diminution of being and lack of true happiness, whether this craving is gratified or not. The mind, when restless with desire, creates an illusory idea of happiness in the gratification of desire. And then knowing that the soul remains dissatisfied even after gratification of desire, seeks freedom through repression Thus, searching for happiness and freedom, the mind gets caught up in the opposites of indulgence and repression, which it finally, which is equally, which it finds equally disappointing. Since it does not try to go beyond the opposites, its movement is always from one opposite to another, and consequently from one disappointment to another. If you take a pause here. Uh, yes, I think uh, I think that the the key point that's made in the first two subtopics is the fact that it man goes between these two extremes of craving and uh, or rather indulgence and repression, and and it is actually driven by craving. I mean, indulgent indulgence and repression of sex. Or sex rather, and uh, yeah, that's the that's the pendulum, right? So you either indulge, and when you see that it is uh, uh, not, uh, you 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 let go of it, and then go to the other extreme, only to come back by the uh, function of the pendulum to the other side, right? So that's that's what is the first idea that is presented here. Right. Any other thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Should we use the word carnal pleasure or sex? Because sex of the body. So the word sex is just like the word love. There are different forms. So I think the technical term should be one of the words I think is carnal pleasure. Okay, Baba. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Or sex as a verb. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Isn't uh, this very same as? Uh, any other kind of indulgence and repression. For example, you like to eat sweets. Mm -hmm. And you eat a lot of sweets and then you feel, what the hell did I do? Or food, gluttony. So I'm, I'm just wondering. Good point. It... Mm -hmm. uh, good point. Uh, but I think uh, uh, if you take some of the things like gluttony, some people never give it up at all, right? So it's uh, this. It's not normally a pendulum. It's a uh, one way forever type thing. In the sense, you are always indulging till you probably either become spiritual or you recognize that uh, it's not the right thing to do uh, by your own discovery and so on and so forth, right? So in that sense, I think uh, I, I, that, that's my thought. Yeah. 
immediate reaction. I, but what do the others feel? immediate speak? reaction is maybe it's the same. Hmm. Sex. So where's the difference? Same thing. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay. Same thing. So Anything in... uh, uh, external uh, attachment to, uh, contact, either uh -huh. either skin or the tongue, is the same thing. The gluttoniness or the craze for sex. Too much over causes. Hmm some excessive some so scars. the question in my mind is why is there a special chapter on sex not generalizing it uh, with any kind of indulgence but maybe later in the chapter we can get some answer if we don't have an immediate answer it's yeah. fine we can keep reading yeah, it, yeah we yeah, my observation read. is that lust, by, lust is a very very difficult yeah. aspect of one yeah. of the five physical senses in terms yes. of touch taste sound smell sight Touch and taste are coarser desires. Touch is, let's say, an example of carnal pleasure or what we call as sexual pleasure. And gluttony, food, taste, is something to do with an object that you desire. Whereas sound, smell, sight are also part of desire, but they are more of a finer desires. The sight to see everything, the smell of flowers or the sound of music. But if you have, uh, you know, if you have, uh, you know, we have come across Indian mythology where Swami Vishwa, like Vishwamitra and all that, one of the ways the gods try to prevent you from self-realizing is to send you these apsaras and damsels to distract you. So that's why I think this chapter on sex is very, um, very important because that is one of the challenges, especially in the 21st century. And I think I've said it earlier, uh, which might sound crude. A friend of mine told me 25 years ago or 20 years ago that he said like, you know, pornography was, you had to pay for pornography 30, 40 years ago and water was free. And today you have to pay for water and you get free pornography. And that is the biggest challenge in current society, especially now with smartphones and how it's affecting the younger population. And there are so many other articles about that. Jai Baba. Yeah, yeah. And Sanjay, you are saying something. Just, yeah, yeah, please. Just to add, because this appears as a special mention in the repentance prayer, what Sunilji was asking. <clears throat> All yeah, that's one. Thoughts and actions. Yeah, so, I mean, that's why what uh, JK was saying is, uh, I just went corroborating what he said. That That is why it uh, has a special mention in the repentance prayer. Last. Yeah, yeah, Baba. Do you agree with that, Sunil? I, I, I also endorse what Kama said, which is uh, mm -hmm. a lust of the physical body, lust, uh, 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 to use Kama's phrase, carnal, uh, carnal pleasures are at a category of their own. And they are probably the most uh, sensitive slash complex to unwind and handle. And that's the examples he cited as well, right? In the uh, uh, mythology and history, we talk about how the best spiritual masters also are subject to it. So uh, cracking and getting the right approach to handle carnal pleasures and that set of sanskaras is something that needs focus or enough attention and that's what Baba is pointing out by carving out uh, these two chapters. Uh, in fact, this chapter and the next one, of course, is about marriage. I hope yeah, that I, I, I do accept. I, I understand. This is what I wanted to hear from everybody. I thought this is the answer. Only small, okay. very small point. I don't disagree, I don't agree with Kama. God sent Apsaras to distract us why would god want to distract us from the journey i'm not sure maybe he's test. testing or test. test test it's a test that's all test technically yeah. sex is for procreation to poke the to keep the creation going on it's basically for procreation but not for carnal pleasure that is why the next chapter the sanctification of married life there's a better explanation on that yes on another yes. note, Baba has said in another chapter, man suffers from lust of the gross body, greed of the subtle body, and anger of the mental body. Convert lust into love, greed into generosity, and anger into compassion and tolerance. 
So we do see here that the Kama, Krodha, Lobam is basically relates to the different bodies, the gross body, subtle body, and mental body, which has to do with the gross sphere, subtle sphere, and mental sphere. And lust is a generic word, lust for food, lust for wealth, lust for so many objects of life, physical objects of life. So, uh, but the lust that we normally think about relates to the uh, carnal pleasures of life. That's again the ambiguity of the English language, unfortunately. You know, Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Professor Kama, I love your explanations. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry, just to uh, just to add, I have I have an acronym which uh, which is uh, of course started here. So I have an acronym for ego, and that is L A G lag. Something which brings you down is lag, like uh, you know the anchor which you do for. So it, lists, it brings you down. So L A G lust. Anger and greed. So, uh, and uh, so we are uh, the, in another chapter which is following reincarnation and karma. So, this ego and our sanskaras from ego, uh, you know, tra translated into lust, anger, and greed is what we are confronting with. And also, the chapter begins with uh, the sentence. I'll just read it again. Which we read just now, sex is decidedly one of the most important problems with which the human mind is confronted in the domain of duality. So, uh, Baba, in all his wisdom, has you know uh, identified this as one of the problems which comes in our path. Thank you. Is, Thanks, Sashokji. You are yeah. on the way to becoming a professor, also. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Ashok, got his, Ashok got his acronym, uh, acronym a little bit uh, twisted. It should be LGA, like LaGuardia yeah. Airport, because it should be gross, subtle, mental. You can't have gross, mental, and subtle. Just, no, no. I'm just kidding. Like, okay. Then you're kidding. Fine. This is only to remember. I mean, of course, if you go into uh, the the gross, subtle, and mental, then of course LGA. But if you say LGA, people, people uh, the common man. Not uh, Dr. Kama, but the common man may not remember, but LAG, they generally remember. Yes, Thank you. correct. Kama, yeah. you're getting competition now. <laughs> nee, nee, <asa> kuch nee. <laughs> I love, I love challenges. I started with Ravi, so you end with Ashok, okay? <laughs> nee, nee, this is just... That scares uh, me a bit. <laughs> this is just three, four years of coming on this and learning every day. Jai Baba, Jai Baba, all Baba is doing. Thank you. You know, what interests me is, even in the plains, people get married. That interests me very much. Even uh, this fifth plane, uh, not must, fifth plane, Baba's agent in Switzerland. Uh, he was a Baba agent. He's there in the Lord Meher. He's married, he has got kids, and he's a construction worker. And he, nobody knows that he's in the fifth plane, but he does uh, the spiritual work while being engaged in the daily life of suffering and happiness. And what is the reason for him to get married? Uh, that really, I mean, people in the grass plane getting married, I understand the, the, the lust party is little dominant. But what about in the fifth plane? Of course, I don't know anybody who in the sixth plane got married, but fifth plane person got married. Anybody has any again, answers? Yeah, again, that's a rubric that we are used to, especially as uh, practicing Hindus or born Hindus or people from the East, right? The rubric being uh, uh, marriage is disconnected from uh, uh, anything uh, spiritual, right? I don't think, uh, uh, wait wait till you finish the second chapter, Sanctification of Married Life, one. And second, the sanskaric uh, opportunity, I would say, in marriage is the most important because you get an opportunity to work off sanskaras that uh, in no other uh, uh, comparable like you may have business partners, you may have uh, friends, you may have uh, uh, 
uh, people that you face in and out of your life and through various uh, uh, age brackets right right to your death. But your maximum opportunity for working off sanskaras is with your spouse. So it is uh, with a purpose that that's done. And even that, even in in the planes, you have sanskaras that are uh, uh, to be sorted, right? And yeah, I don't have examples of six plane uh, uh, people having uh, a spouse, but I I think that's least of the problems. If if it's uh, if he if he has a spouse, well, it's his sanskaric load uh, in the sixth plane where he needs a needs a spouse. It's just one more uh, aspect of sanskara that uh, uh, we need to accept. Is what I'd say. Tama, your comments? Yeah. Yeah, I have an observation or comment on Ravi's question, which is very good because there are two parts to it. One is from God Speaks. When we talk about the involution planes, the fifth plane and sixth plane has to do with the domain of mind. The fifth plane, domain of mind related to thoughts and the sixth plane, domain of uh, mind related to feelings. feelings. That is one part. The second part is in God is infinite love where there's a beautiful description about uh, the different forms of love. We know that lust is the lowest form of love in the gross sphere of existence, which is called 100% undiluted selfishness. Then when you go into the subtle sphere, 50% of lust is sublimated and 50% lust is still there, but it's in the subtle form. It is never transformed into the gross form. And when you go into the mental sphere, 25% lust is still there, but it's again sublimated and can only be expressed in the mental aspect. It can't be expressed in the subtle or uh, gross form. And one example I know, based on my reading, there is a guy, uh, his name was Papaji, you know, and Papaji was from Lucknow and he got enlightened through Ramana Maharishi. And the Osho uh, people, when Osho passed away, they gravitated towards him. And he was talking about his past life. And one of the things he was saying is that when he was um, um, in one of the planes in his past life, he had gone into Samadhi and they thought that he was, uh, uh, he had uh, basically dropped his body and they buried him alive. But then later in this life, when he became enlightened, he uh, said that the reason he didn't get enlightened in his past life was when he was uh, in charge of this ashram, he was um, very attracted to this woman who used to work in that ashram. And that sanskara was still there and she became his wife in this life. Just an example. So I'll stop at that. But uh, just to answer Ravi's question is that lust is there but it's not expressed in gross form or subtle form. It's only in the mental aspect. Like you see an attractive woman, you say, wow, great. Like, you know, that's about it type of thing. You know? Jai Baba. Yeah. Uh, only, can you, only can you provide reason... a specific reference uh, to the percentages? That's very interesting. Uh, can, uh, if you can find it and share it on the group, that'd be great. Uh, Kama and Sanjay, you, you had something to it's, say. It's there in the chapter. Just... It's there in the chapter on... The 25% and 50% is there in that God is infinite love. If you read it. So, the okay, last chapter in the discourses, it is there. 50% in the subtle plane and the traces, if I remember right, traces of uh, lust is there in the mental plane. So uh, I, yeah. I, my only uh, comment was that because of our own experiences, we are relating somebody marrying on fifth plane to sex because he married. It may not be for that, right? It could be for companionship, friendship, living together. Correct, uh, correct. Exchange. So uh, it is just that, and we are saying that uh, uh, they had the sanskaras to be, you know, finished off. And uh, indirectly mentioning the sexual uh, lust was still there to be killed. So that may not be right, actually. It's just our conjecture. Yeah, Baba. No, but that is lust in the gross form, lust in the subtle form, and lust in the mental form. You have different degrees yeah. of lust also. Right. So why why we are connecting the marriage to lust? That's because of our own experience, probably. It could be just working together for a purpose that God brings them, brought them together. That way also we can see, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, that the rishis yeah, were yeah, married. Absolutely. Yes. 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 Yeah. 
Thank you. And I think I think if you go back to the Rishi's map, and I don't want to go on on this topic, but if you go back to the Rishi's being married, it was also about the practicality of that uh, uh, the period in time, right? Where you needed help, where you needed somebody to make food and stuff and so on without being very misogynistic. All right, um, let's continue. But uh, but one more one more uh, comment I wanted to make because we had read this in reincarnation and karma, the significance of male and female reincarnations. Okay, this is my observation. It says clearly the soul has no gender, but when it's born in a male body, only the male psychological tendencies tendencies come into the conscious mind. The female psychological tendencies are sublimated are in the subconscious, and vice versa for the woman. The attraction between a man and woman is because the soul, the consciousness of the soul to feel complete, needs both female and psychological, um, uh, male and female psychological tendencies to feel complete. Hence that attraction. But then what happens? Maya distracts us because of our animal evolution that we get attracted to the form of the body and then we get entangled. So that is why that the male and female attraction and being together, as you said, being soul partners or soul mates, the reason is for spiritual upliftment where both male and female can go up the spiritual ladder and self emancipate. That's my understanding. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Let's uh, continue. I have, I have a comment to that. In the current world, we are seeing not just male and female getting attracted to each other, but female and female and male and male also. How do we explain that? It is Sorry, like so every yeah. soul consciousness is an Ardhanadishwara. We have each male or female have both male and female psychological tendencies. So what happens sometimes because of sanskaras of past births, the, the male body, where the male uh, psychological tendency should be dominant, is not being dominant. It's the female psychological tendencies are predominating that for certain sanskaric purposes, which I, I can't go more beyond that. You know, that is my understanding, basically. Okay, you can't because so, you don't want to or you can't because you don't know? Well, I think it's part of the pre-birth plan. You can't Pre help it plan. because when I lived in New York, I have, we had a lot of gay friends, okay? I've met a lot of them. And mm -hmm. they are actually very, very honest in their relationship. They are very loving. In fact, much more loving than heterosexual couples. And they are genuinely, they are interested in the same sex, which has more to do with love than about lust, to be very frank. It's that kind of a mental... Uh, relationship or bond that they have. So this must be some kind of pre-birth plan, which I don't have the capacity to explain why they have to go through it, you know. Uh, and it's, and it's, if I and may it's, add, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I, I don't see enough material in it. Also, we saw, we heard that uh, Don Stevens was uh, gay, right? Yes. Not enough explanation. Also, his personal life, he didn't want to explain to Baba. And Baba never asked, I heard. No, I think he has confided. Uh, the, uh, mm -hmm. Baba can, uh, and uh, if I remember right, there was a, a episode or a video that I saw where uh, it was mentioned that he did bring up his problem to Baba. Uh, I mm -hmm. shouldn't even say the word problem because uh, uh, just before that, let me make my comment. So uh, dominant, Dominance of a particular tendency is what makes you male or female. And if there is a sanskaric framework where the dominance is absent or tending towards the other side in any degree, is where the tendency changes. So in that sense, uh, I, I think it's uh, biological slash sanskaric and we have to be absolutely uh, clear that that's that's it's it's not i mean that's a, that's about it if if we can accept male and female as two different things we should be able to accept everything else in between as well that's all i would say as far as I that is concerned yeah i want to add uh, one more yeah. thing 
Uh, yeah. I don't just deviate from the gay thing and the lesbian thing. Uh, Baba said, uh, in order to get a God realization, they should have some authority. And authority comes with a male form. That's what Baba said. And uh, even in uh, Vedic scriptures, Viveka Chudamani, written by Adi Shankaracharya, uh, there is a sloka there, a male form will God realization, something like that, vaguely, I vaguely remember. But uh, it's very interesting to note this. Every, as Kama said, you know, every person has got both male and female sanskaras. But uh, if you are in a male form, if you are full-fledged male, the female sanskaras are all dormant. They are latent. You know, they are not active. And then opposite. But to get the God realization, I believe Baba said in the Lord Meher, uh, that one has to be male form. But Baba so also said... Females don't get God realization? This is something... Oh, well, wait, wait a second. Let me finish this. All right. Okay. This is what Baba said in the, uh, so in the Lord Meher, in the second book, you know. Hmm. But Baba said, uh, people like uh, Gulmai, they have come to me. And um, uh, was it uh, the, the Samadhi in uh, Upper Meherabad? Mildred Kyle. She has come to me. A lot of uh, Baba mentioned a lot of people who have come to him, uh, the female parts. Uh, that's the confusion I have. Yes, Baba said one who sh one should have authority uh, to get God realization. Uh, that he comes with the male form. And I was uh, I was thinking about Don Stevens. Even though he, he is a gay, but he is a male form, right? Maybe something to do with that. I'm not sure. I'm just uh, guessing. Yeah, Baba. My point okay. is, while yeah. everybody has some explanation, the end of it, like Kamal said, I'm not the authority on it. Uh, Raviji says, I'm not sure. Seems like not enough explanation, at least in this OS. Maybe Baba in the next OS wants to explain to us more. But this is the current issue. There are pride parades happening all over the world. So I, the current OS, is it solving this issue or not? Or we have to wait for 700 years for the next OS or ask Baba something. So uh, actually, I think uh, uh, actually affirmative action and uh, uh, action to bring them into the mainstream is what probably one can argue uh, Baba has already triggered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it, we have seen a never before recognition, respect and uh, welcoming into the mainstream. Firstly, definition and respectability of these people. Uh, 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 because even the definition was not was absent, the social ostracization was there in in case of uh, discovery, and so on and so forth. We have moved far away from that in the last uh, thirty years, and in fact, I think uh, some of it, I, personally, I be believe is uh, almost uh, borderline silly. This uh, whole concept of being extra respectful and so on, but bringing them into the mainstream and bringing them into uh, uh, a treatment of normalcy and uh, having, uh, 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 I, I think, a lot of lot to do with that is is with Baba's uh, push. So I don't say he's not handled it. It's my personal opinion. <coughs> Ravi, you were saying something. Yeah, I found the reference uh, in the Lord Meher uh, on online page six seventy eight. It's interesting to note. Can I read a small paragraph here? Please. Very small, very small paragraph here. Very interesting. Upasni Maharaj was a woman in his previous birth, and he will never take birth again. God realization is usually obtained while living in human form, as with the human form comes authority. But this there is a special authority that comes with the male human form. A perfect master has a circle of 12 men and two female appendages of the 14 people. All the members of the circle are males, except the two women 
who play the roles of spiritual mother and spiritual sister. I thought that's very interesting. Uh, what kind of authority do you get as a male from? Any understanding mm -hmm. on that? I accept. No. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm I wondering. I, I enjoy no authority at all. I, just because of being in the male form. Just Because uh, to, to reach the seventh plane, you have to drop all your authority. Dilute everything. Yes, 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 yes. But even to be come to that stage, probably the male form help, helps. See, uh, male or female doesn't matter. That's for our discrimination, right? Well, if somebody mm -hmm. is in a male form, he's male. Somebody is in female form, he's in female. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have everyone has got both the both the sanskaras, but all the sanskaras are dropped yes. before being uh, eligible for God realization. All that understood, all Ravishi, Yes. So, what is special about being male on this path of evolution? Is something I'm struggling with. I'm asking these questions because this is probably the third time we are reading it. Maybe Correct. more. So we should ask these complex questions rather than just go to the fourth time. Right. So I'm sorry, I'm slowing down <laughs> the progress. We are just I, I, I no, can, we are Jay Baba, I can give an observation. I can give an observation yes. that what I have read is that the avatar comes only in male form. And very few Sadhgurus are in female forms. That is one thing. So females do become self-realized. So there are Sadhguru. Maybe it's 80, 20 rule or 90, 10 rule. We don't know. But yes, most of the Sadhgurus come in male form. Other aspect is, I think, whether you're talking about the LGBT community or whatever, the ultimate purpose of life is for the soul to self-emancipate. Whether you're male, female, heterosexual, uh, you know, LGBT, whatever, those are uh, irrelevant because one is the fact that Baba accepted Don Stevens and there was no comment on his uh, sexual orientation. And also, I personally know couples and people who are gay in Mehrabad. We know that. So that's not an issue. And it tells you clearly that Baba accepted everybody. And we are here at a time in the world where you are able to, they are coming out of the closet. So people are much more open about their sexual orientation. And it's more important to look at their attitude, you know. And the only important thing is about love, pure love. And to, um, and what we call as Manonash or whatever, like. So I think that's how I look at it. Even the Baba flag we see is like the rainbow flag, which is of the material side that the gay community uses, LGBT. And of course, the flag that Baba has designed is more on the spiritual side, blue on the top and red at the bottom. Hey, Baba. Yeah, it's flipped. It's flipped. The pride flag is uh, flipped compared to ours, the other flag. Now, I just want to say that we are just curious about all these things, right? These are all, doesn't matter. When we get to the point of God realization, we drop everything anyway. All this is happening in our creation consciousness with our mind. So it doesn't matter whether we know it or not. I just wanted to add, you know, all this is in the world of duality. The soul, when it goes into the world of reality, is just a soul. And all these uh, orientations or, or, or your uh, sex is just in the world of duality. And when you go for real, God realization, in the seventh plane or beyond, it's just the soul which merges with God. And that is important because there is there has to be a bifurcation between body and soul. So I think uh, we have to think about it in a uh, mutually exclusive circles. The body, the domain and the soul is what comes to my mind. No, see. Uh, God realization is what? Realizing that you are God, right? It, it happens yes. through your mind. Only tool you have is mind. Right now we think I am this body, I am this mind. Once all the sanskaras are gone, the mind is gone. Mind is only receptacle, receptacle of all sanskaras. Energy body is gone. Subtle body is gone. Uh, mental body is gone. Eye consciousness is gone. Uh, is not is gone, it's replaced by universal consciousness. So 
when all the sanskaras are gone. So every connection is with the sanskaras. That's all there is to it. Raviji and Absolutely. Shokji, sorry, Raviji. I am tempted to say something. We are on the chapter of sex. I would like to debate sex a little bit more. That's why I'm asking more difficult questions. Everything else that you said, Raviji said, Kama said, we all understand. That's in the other chapters of God Speaks. We have to drop everything. We have to drop this, that. Finally, it's just no duality. All of us understand. But the purpose of reading is to delve into the topic. Yeah, okay. Right, yeah. So let's stick to the topic. We'll get a little better understanding if we stick to the point, not talk about everything else in God Speaks, because we all understand that. We all go through it two, three times. Yes, we understand that, but it is relevant here. I, I, I think what Karthik mentioned is that we should finish both the chapters and then, then probably have a discussion. Because you see, this is this is what we have done over three times. Every time a difficult question comes, we say, read later. Then we'll come back no, to really. it. Then we forget. No, right? No, no, no. So no. I, I, I'm just no. worried I'm that it cannot I, be I an escape path to understand. It is something. valid to make a recommendation to wait and read a little bit more. It has, exactly. uh, it has happened that, uh, you know, later on, as we continue reading, our questions are answered. You see, I don't deny that. Paving the way. This, what is we reading here now, leads to another thing and another thing, and they're all, all interrelated. So I have no doubt that many, if we don't go astray, if we don't bring a lot of these things into the, and focus on what Bobo is trying to share with us, then our question might be answered. So, Let's be patient and continue. I think we've been wait. I mean, ever since I've joined the talks, I don't even know what you guys are talking about. Anyway. Okay. You you are a bit bit late, so that you're catching up. But, no, um, you know, uh, I must say I had a browser issue. I don't know if there is any problem with Chrome. Finally, I opened the Firefox, and Firefox seems to work okay, but. Uh, it really challenged me for 40 minutes, so I don't know what's going on. Oh my on. God. Yeah. Okay. But now anyway, uh, Sunil, I'm not here to uh, uh, say that we should not discuss. As you rightly said, we should discuss to uh, a, a, any level uh, so that we, that's the whole idea of the group. We can read in person and uh, uh, make our own uh, assumptions or understanding, but uh, it's always better to Put this up in the group so uh, there's no uh, uh speed there's no what should i say time issues on uh, time limitations on discussion right. so my, uh, my uh, only, having my said only, that yeah yeah my only submission or request is stick to the topic don't yes agree, agree. Up other, and other uh, I, I will also i will also enforce that fair enough fair enough i understand <laughs> not everybody may have all the answers we are not god we are not there yet I'm the lowest of all the forms that you see on this group, probably. So I'm Daniel, I, just the, want to, I just want to say something. We, you said that we already read four times, and even if we read another four times, I don't know whether we'll come to any any agreement or conclusion or full understanding. Okay. Many oh. times when I read uh, Baba books like God Speaks or other books, you know. I have always a question, and uh, I don't know whom to ask. You know, even if I ask somebody, they'll tell their opinion, but I want to know that fits to my question and my understanding. So same, same, what same. I do, I straight ask Baba straight. I do I'm morning. I'm hoping that there's Baba and all of you, like Baba directed topic, Baba directed Nomita. I hope I was hoping Baba directs one of you to answer my question. No, I, he may direct me. He might give me an answer, but you may not be satisfied with that answer. That's true. Yeah, it could be my sense. Sure. Direct makeup. What I would suggest you is, you know, what I would suggest you is in a humble way. Okay, sure. you ask Baba directly. And if you need the answer, if Baba knows you much more than you know about yourself. True. If yeah. you need the answer, he will certainly give you the answer. 
and yes. experience also. Okay. If you are ready, if you are ready, ready for <laughs> the answer, <laughs> <laughs> you okay. know. Yeah, let's keep going. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In let's the, keep going. In yeah. the in thank you, humanity thank you. chapter, first chapter, there is a paragraph. See, all these intellectual discussions are really very helpful, but they can bring to us to only to a level beyond which it is us, our own commitment and the actual realization that we must seek. It, it cannot answer all the questions that keep coming into our minds, our limited minds. So that's how we should, we should do this, but this will not ultimately solve our quest for understanding. Jai Baba. Jai Baba, Jai Baba, Jai Baba. You know, recently Good I had a chance. Uh, Sanjay Ji. Hmm. Yeah, Baba. <clears throat> you know, um, in our universal prayer, we say, uh, you know, the thing about lust and blah, blah, blah. So, in Baba's path, what should be our way of life? Should we focus on our energy in accepting people? the way they are, or should we also help, since we are in Baba's path, to make them understand that all these things, whether it is gluttony or, in this case, uh, uh, lust, it is just skin deep. Is it, is it on us because we are in Baba's path and we know a little better to explain and reason it out with people uh, who are not so aware um, and be part of um, getting them a better understanding of what what is the purpose of life and how sanskaras play a role in Many lifetimes, you come here to clean up your sanskaras. So, so the focus of the people who we meet, either they are with multiple partners or they are, uh, you know, driven by lust. And if in our circles we are aware of that, is it on us to just observe and say, well, you know, it is what it is? Or since we know this sanskara game, is it? good for us to also share this perspective with them. What do you guys think? Thank you, Jai Baba. That's very subjective and personal. Uh, with or without the group, I think uh, what you would do is, is based on the relationship you share with that individual. Whether that individual is within the group, uh, and uh, sees himself as the Baba lover or not, right? So in, the, in that sense, it's it's just left to your relationship with that person. Uh, having said that, I, it's also your personality. So if your personality is of the type that wants to share and intervene and be forceful about it, uh, you may do it. But uh, I don't think there is a, a right answer for for that. That's my opinion. In the sense, there's no prescription. You, 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 you just do uh, what you are comfortable doing in the context of the other and your true nature, your, your nature. Okay, Jai Baba. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Ashok. Yeah. Opposites, Thank you. <laughs> uh, opposites of indulgence and repression. In order to solve the problem of sex, the mind must first understand that both alternatives are equally the creation of imagination working under the deluding influence of craving. Craving is implicitly present in the repression of sex as well as in its gratification. Both result in the vitiation of consciousness through lust or the desire for sensations. The mind is therefore inevitably restless in either alternatives 
Kartik Vijayan autumn days. Just as when there are clouds in the sky, there is gloom and lack of sunshine, whether it rains or not. So when the human mind is shrouded by craving, there is diminution of being and lack of true happiness, whether that craving is gratified or not. The mind, when restless with desire, creates an illusory idea of happiness in the gratification of desire, and then knowing that the soul remains dissatisfied even after gratification of desire, seeks freedom through repression. The searching for happiness and freedom, the mind gets caught up in the opposites of indulgence and repression, which is find, which it finds equally disappointing. Since it does not try to go beyond these opposites, his movement is always from one opposite to the another, and consequently from one disappointment to another. So the pendulum moves back and forth. So uh, the logic is explained in the first two lines in this last paragraph. The mind, when restless with desire, creates an illusory idea of happiness and the gratification of desire, and then knowing that the soul remains dissatisfied even after gratification. So there's a mind and soul. So the soul remains dissatisfied even after gratification. So then it moves towards repression and then the pendulum swings back, right? So it, it, that's what is explained here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to add, Karthik, in the earlier sure. paragraph, there is the first line which says, in order to solve the problem of sex, the mind must first understand that both alternatives are equally the creation of imagination. So, I mean, uh, working under the deluding influence of craving, I think that is also very uh, important to keep in mind True. that it's basically uh, Maya or, you know, working on the mind. Uh, it's yeah, either Maya or Mayavati. <laughs> I, I, I joined this discussion a little bit later. And so what's the Baba's uh, statements on the marriages and all? Ba what Baba said, like, one yeah. place we were talking about the lust and all everything, right? So what Baba says about the marriages? Ashish, if we can uh, wait, I mean, yeah, my, my suggestion is that we can, of course, discuss, but we have a, a chapter called Sanctification of Married Life or something like that in the next chapter. Which we are so, going to read after this. but. Uh, also, do catch up with the video when this is published. A lot of uh, things uh, answered there. So, uh, but uh, 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 the next chapters is even better. Absolutely. No, like, uh, like uh, can I answer briefly to Ashish? Uh, whatever suits the individual, that's what Baba suggests. There are people who wants to abstain from marriage. Uh, those people, they choose that path, but there is a reason why they're doing it for the sake of spirituality. Uh, that suits for them. And the majority of the people wants to get married, but that's okay. Because Baba wants us to be in this world as normal as possible. But keep loving God. Be honest, sincere, what you do. Do your best. Uh, these are the few things. If we lead such a life, you will uh, reach the goal. It doesn't matter whether you are married or not married. That's what somewhere in the discourses it is said. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's what I remember. Yeah, Baba. Right, 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 there is also. May I please uh, make a comment? Yeah, one of you, Ashok, and then you can speak, Mahu. Ashok, finish what you're okay, saying. Yeah, there's, al yeah. there's also, you know, uh, mention about celibacy, but that is difficult. So we it is it comes up a little later in this chapter and uh, so uh, you know uh, celibacy is, is of course more towards uh, spirituality but it is difficult and Baba has said that since celibacy is difficult the ma marriage is the best next best alternative is something like that he has mentioned but we can also read it and come to that J Baba sure coming up yes it's coming up ahead. Uh, Mahu, you're saying something. Yes, in Lord uh, actually referring about marriage and so forth, uh, we will be reading more. But in Lord Meher Volume 4, um, there's a quote that it says, each marriage uh, 
uh, adds seven lifetimes, okay, uh, or seven uh, incarnation uh, to the consciousness. So the soul has to go through seven more incarnation. As far as Oops. steps and uh, I'm sorry, I have to finish. As far as uh, sex and syllabacy and so forth, I'll share my understanding. Homosexuality, heterosexuality, da, 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 da. Uh, it is very simple. As our consciousness gets cleaner, purer from all the shadow of the samskaras, the cravings to satisfy the desires, which is sex is no doubt one of them, will be diminished. It'll, it'll, it'll be lesser and lesser and lesser, and finally it'll be diminished. So there has been places that, uh, you know, when uh, the couples, married couple have asked Baba, and Baba, you know, recommended. He said, if you can stay uh, uh, celibate, stay celibate, although you're married and you have love for each other, but they stay celibate or even to people who lack the same sex and so forth. Baba says, it's natural, it's in this lifetime, but deal with it till this lifetime finishes and then move on, you know. So whatever indulgence that we get ourselves involved, we only add more and more to our load. That's my take on it. Most advanced soul had nothing to do with sex. They're not married. You know, we can see the Mandalis or people who worked with Mandalis and that, that, that. So those are the examples that Baba left for us. So we can look at their life and see how they live their life. It all depends on an individual and the aim and the goal of life for that individual. If you really want to reach God, then limit your desire. Don't fall for it. If you can abstain from not getting married, I recommend definitely not getting married, okay? And things like that. But again, each individual and their sons, quarters are different. That's my comment, Jay Baba. I couldn't uh, resist jumping in when you said the seven uh, uh, lifetimes because it just hit me that almost everybody on this call uh, qualifies on that count. So anyway, jokes apart, uh, uh, good comment, and I think uh, uh, it, 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 the the simplicity is there, like you said. But uh, yeah, we'll have to uh, put it in context every time you deal with the problem, deal with the issues uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, please um, continue, uh, Ashok. False promises of opposites. Thus, craving falsifies the operation of imagination and presents the mind with the option between the alternatives of indulgence and repression, which prove to be equally deceptive in their province of happiness. However, in spite of alternate and repeated disappointment in indulgence as well as repression, the mind usually does not renounce the cause of unhappiness, which is craving. Hence, while experiencing disappointment in repression, it is easily susceptible to the false promise of gratification. And while experiencing disappointment in gratification, it is easily susceptible to the false promise of pure mechanical repression. This is like moving within a cage. The gateway to the spiritual path of internal and spontaneous renunciation of craving remains closed for those who have not the good fortune to be awakened by a perfect master. The subtopic is renunciation of craving through awakening. True awakening is the entering into the path of wisdom, which in course of time surely leads to the freedom and abiding happiness of eternal, of life eternal, sorry. Internal and spontaneous renunciation of craving is as different from mechanical repression as it is from indulgence. 
mind turns to mechanical repression of craving because of disappointment, but it turns to internal and spontaneous re renunciation of craving because of delusion, disillusionment or awakening. I take a pause here. So it says that internal uh, awakening is the is, is is better than mechanical and uh, repression and or indulgence and so that is the next step i mean internal renunciation so the the key is renunciation and it will it has come from within any shall i continue any other yeah the need for indulgence or mechanical repression arises only when the nature of craving is not clearly grasped when aspirants become fully awake to inevitable bondage and suffering entailed by craving, they begin voluntarily to disburden themselves of craving through intelligent understanding. The question of indulgence or repression arises only when there is craving. The subtopic is understanding craving. The need for both vanishes with the complete disappearance of craving. When mind is free from craving, the mind can no longer be moved by false promises of indulgence or mechanical repression. I personally feel that the need for this, this line, the sentence, the need for, can you just go up? The need for both vanishes with the complete disappearance of craving. That's a very significant thing that you have to move towards disappearance of craving or Restraint nearer to freedom from indulgence is the next subtopic. However, it should be borne in mind that life of freedom is nearer to the life of restraint than to the life of indulgence. So in quality is essentially different from both. Hence the aspirants, hence for aspirants, a life of strict celibacy is preferable to married life if restraint comes to them easily with without undue sense of self-repression. Such restraint is difficult for most persons and sometimes impossible. And for them, marriage, married life is decidedly more helpful than a life of celibacy. For ordinary persons, married life is undoubtedly advisable unless they have a special aptitude for celibacy. Next subtopic is possibilities of celibacy or marriage. Just as the life of celibacy requires and calls forth the development of many virtues, married life in turn also nourishes the growth of many spiritual qualities of utmost importance. The value of celibacy lies in the habit of restraint and the sense of detachment and independence it gives. But as long as the mind is not altogether free from craving, there is no true freedom. In the same way, the value of marriage lies in the lessons of mutual adjustment and the sense of unity with the other. True union or dissolution of duality is possible, however, only through divine love, which can never dawn as long as there is slightest shadow of lust or craving in the mind. Only by trading, only by trading the path of inner and spontaneous renunciation of craving, is it possible to attain true freedom and unity? Karthik, allow me to read this slide again. True union or dissolution of unity is possible, however, only through divine love, which can never dawn as long as there is the slightest shadow of lust or craving in the mind. Next uh, subtopic. If I, if I pause you here, I think these are the, uh, the the choices laid out were already covered in our discussion earlier. Mahu brought it up saying, if there is a choice, there is celibacy is better than not. But uh, yeah, if uh, the tendency is that you prefer marriage, yes, marriage uh, is an option and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Path of perfection. It's... Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. 
okay path of perfection open through celibacy or marriage for those who are celibate as well as for married persons the path of inner life is the same when aspirants are drawn by the truth they long for nothing else and then as the truth increasingly comes within the ken they gradually disburden themselves of craving whether in celibacy or in marriage they are no longer swayed by the deceptive promises of indulgence or mechanical repression and they practice internal and spontaneous renunciation of craving until they are free from the deceptive opposites the path of perfection is open to the aspirants whether in celibacy or in marriage and whether they begin from celibacy or from marriage will depend upon their sanskaras and karmic ties of the past they cheerfully accept the conditions that their past lives have determined for them and utilize these conditions for spiritual advancement in the light of the ideal they come to perceive the next sub topic is necessity of clear choice aspirants must choose one of the two courses that are open to them they must take to life of celibacy or to a married life and must avoid at all cost a cheap compromise between the two promiscuity in sexual gratification is bound to land the aspirants in the most pitiful and dangerous chaos of ungovernable lust as such diffuse and undirected lust veils the higher values it perpetuates entanglement and creates in the spiritual path insuperable difficulties to the eternal and spontaneous renunciation of craving sex in marriage is entirely different from sex outside marriage in marriage the sanskaras of lust are much higher and are capable of being removed more easily when a sexual relationship is accompanied much lighter a, much, oh, much sorry, lighter yeah, sorry lighter. in yeah. in marriage the the sanskaras of lust are much lighter and are capable of being removed more easily sorry when a sexual relationship is accompanied by a sense of responsibility love and spiritual idealism conditions for the sublimation of sex are more favorable than when it is cheap and promiscuous beautiful para yes dangers of promiscuity in promiscuity the temptation to explore the possibilities of mere sexual contact is formidable it is only by the maximum restriction of the scope of mere sex that aspirants can arrive at any real understanding of the values that enable through the gradual transformation of sex into love if the mind tries to understand sex through increasing the scope of sex there is no end to the delusions to which it is prey for there is no end to the enlarging of its scope in promiscuity the suggestions of lust are necessarily the first to present themselves to the mind and the individuals are doomed to react to people within the limitations of this initial perversion and thus close the door to deeper experiences so if i may add the previous paragraphs brings in the the dangers of promiscuity oh yeah it is there the things of promiscuity ah uh, truth cannot okay the yeah. sub topic is okay. infinity attainable through marriage truth cannot be grasped by skipping over the surface of life and multiplying superficial contacts it requires the preparedness of mind which which can center its capacities upon selected experiences and free itself from its limiting features this process of discrimination between the higher and the lower and the transcendence of the lower in favor of the higher is made possible through wholehearted concentration and a real and earnest interest in life sir so, such 
whole hearted concentration and real interest is necessarily precluded when the mind becomes a slave to the habit of running at a tangent and wandering between many possible objects of similar experience in married life the range of experience to be had in the company of the partner is so wide that the suggestions of lust are not necessarily the first to present themselves to the mind there is therefore a real opportunity for the aspirants to recognize and annul the limiting factors in experience by the gradual elimination of lust and the progression through a series of increasingly richer experiences of love and sacrifice they finally arrive at infinity again the beautiful last para if, if you don't mind can you just read it again yes definitely in married life the range of experience to be had in the company of the partner is so wide that the suggestions of lust are not necessarily the first to present themselves to the mind there is therefore a real opportunity for the aspirants to recognize and annul the limiting factors in experience by gradual elimination of lust and the progression through a series of richer experiences of love and sacrifice they finally arrived at infinity absolutely if so i, I can think uh, this yeah, go ahead if we have, we have to move from physical lo- love to uh, divine love and that's the path to reaching infinity yeah i think uh, along that is is also the refining of, of the the experiences and you move from the lower experiences the lower forms of attachment to including lust to uh, higher forms of love finally going to infinity right so yeah it's so i think we are almost out of time but i'd surely like to get feedback given that we had a involved and interested audience today what what is the final comments any questions if they linger if there are no questions we have 3 minutes can we read some more no it's uh, we we are finishing a chapter so i'd rather not okay okay, okay. yeah 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 my only I comment think, is uh, that we all can read it, read and maybe come uh with or we can post some questions in the uh, telegram group and then we can discuss it in the next if required yeah i think in my experience yes we understand this is a problem that baba has explained intellectual understanding but uh, in my experience when i am too involved in baba i am deep thinking deep love constant remembrance the tendencies of lust automatically die down so that that's probably the answer that we have all rest is all okay just understand yeah. that's very beautiful yeah, uh, I mean, sorry. Yeah. i'm sorry um uh, Satish, uh, Sanjay, uh, yeah. If we focus, you know, we have lust, we have anger, we have all these weaknesses. I don't think we need to worry about them. But as long as we focus more on loving Baba, the attention our mind pays to all these things will certainly dwindle down and uh, take the dominance on the loving the God part. Then the things will be easier. that's all there is to it and he, he will Baba. protect he will protect us from falling off the path so if we have that trust and kind of confidence uh, then that that's all the problem that even if i fall down he will pick me up once again yes we yes. gave that example you know mm-hmm. when i'm about to fall down should be there yeah. yeah but of course should be there, there. Yeah. I just wanted to add that Baba has said that uh, taking if you 
come closer to him, take his name. It's like a mosquito net. So even if you have any thoughts or any um, distractions, uh, if you think about him, and I think it's mentioned elsewhere also, that when you think about him, all of the thoughts will dwindle or vanish. There, there is a beautiful bhav bhajan on this mosquito net, you know, uh, which says, Man bhatke to bhatke rahi, chal bhatak na jaye rahi. Man hai machar ki hi nahi. Man is like a mosquito. Man hai machar ki hi nahi. Bhun bhun karta jaye rahi. It will keep on swing. Try, try to bite you. Man hai machar ki hi nahi. Bhun bhun karta jaye rahi. Kintu lage jab prem masahari. When we have the mosquito net of love. Kintu lage jab prem masahari. Kaat nahi wo paaye rahi. He'll not be able to bite you. So uh, that that is nice. yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Really beautiful. Very, very Sanjay, beautiful. Why don't you sing it, please? At least one, one few lines. Well, it is just just these, these two lines that I remember. Yeah, please. Chal bhatak na cha jaye rahi. Right action. Man bhatke to bhatke rahi. Chal bhatak na jaye rahi. Man hai machhar ki hi nahi. Bhun bhun karta jaye rahi. Kintu lage jab prem masahari. Kintu lage jab prem masahari. Kaat nahi wo paaye rahi. Man bhat ke to bhat ke rahi. Chal bhatak na jaye rahi. This, there are more stanzas which I don't remember. Jai Baba, Jai thank Baba. you. Beautiful, beautiful. Jai Baba. Thank you so much for the spontaneous Jai rendering. And uh, let's catch up again next week. Uh, it's a very good, in, interesting and involved discussion. Thank you for that. I hope yes. everybody has answers and they feel better from where they were. And uh, special thoughts and uh, uh, words of comfort to the thirds as they are going through their bereavement. Have a good, uh, have a great week ahead. Jai Baba. 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 Jai Baba.